Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me today for your Pilates session. Today's session is roller and weights. So you will need a foam roller and a set of hand weights. If you only have one or you don't have either of those, don't worry, still come through the class and you will be able to modify as you go, as you go along and I'll offer some modifications for you. So you can push your weights to the side to start and just put the foam roller down on your mat and you can bring yourself on top of it and I want you to have it between your shoulder blades along your thoracic spine. And take your hands behind to support your neck and I want you to be in a position where you feel like you can indeed support your head and your neck. So it's not dangling way back, it's not really being held up here heavy. It's just kind of like this dead weight that you're able to support in your hands. And then allow your breath to arrive. Allow your mind to start to connect to the movement of your ribs as you inhale and exhale. And allow yourself to start to really commit to connecting and arriving here to do the work during this session. Now, if you are not right back uh, on the, between your shoulder blades, push the roller forward a little so you can be back there. And then we're going to start to come through some uh, extension. So inhaling, pressing back, and then exhaling, coming back up where you started. So I don't want you to uh, really dump yourself back behind. Again, you have that support of your head and your hands. And just starting to come through a little bit of extension here for your spine. Noticing how it feels for you, if it feels nice and like a stretch and a release, or if it's a little bit strong. If it's too strong, then modify as you go and don't come back to a point where it feels like an overload. As it feels better for you and or you get more mobility, then feel free to come back into a little bit of a deeper extension. So really allow yourself to open up, open your ribs to the ceiling. Coming back up to the center. Inhaling as you come back, that's going to give that space into your ribs. And then exhaling as you come back. Now the next time you're up, if it feels good for you and you would like to have a little bit more extension into your spine, then move the roller down so it's almost a little bit more into the center of your spine. And then same thing, inhale, again, allow yourself to come a little bit more over top now, and then exhale, coming up. Doing a couple more of these, just really encouraging this spinal mobility. And then we're going to start to incorporate some deep core work. The next time you're up, reposition the roller so it's between so it's between your shoulder blades along your thoracic spine. Hands come behind to support your head again, and this time when you come up, you're curling up. So exhale, draw your belly in, ribs come together, coming up a little bit higher than you were before. So what I want to, you to start to feel now is that your ribs come closer towards your belly button and come together in the center. You inhale, get that opening. Exhale, core connection. So your pelvis is still staying the same. So it's not that you're imprinting your spine and dumping it into the mat underneath. You're keeping that length through your spine. But now you're getting more work into your rectus abdominis and into those deep abdominal stabilizing muscles. Now you can stay where you are doing it in this variation, or if you would like to make it more challenging, the next time you are coming through the center, lift your legs up to tabletop, and then continue on. Now this of course is more load into your core because your legs are up the floor and no longer support it. So now your core is doing the support. So really assess whether this is the right variation for you or if it works better for you to have your feet on the floor. Keep finding the work, drawing your belly in, connecting to your breath. Three. Two. Last one. 
and then bring your feet down. One more time, opening yourself, yourself back on top of the roller. Just letting that beautiful release happen. And then bring yourself up, leave the roller on the side where it is, and come into your Z-sit position. So now your feet are gonna be in the direction opposite the roller. Hand comes onto the roller, feel yourself sitting up really tall, and then press it away from you as you come over into your lateral flexion. And then peeling back up, roller stays there, fold over the other side. So really allow the roller to be an opportunity for you to connect into your lat underneath as you pull your arm back in. So not just dumping into your arm here and then hauling yourself up, but really finding that connection underneath to return and then flip over to the other side. So it kind of adds another element, another level of concentration and connection required to the mermaid, the typical mermaid that we would do. And of course you can do the typical mermaid, just put your forearm down on the floor instead of on the roller and fold yourself over. Last one here. And then picking up the roller, flipping it over to the other side, and flip your feet and legs over the other side as well. Find yourself sitting up tall, grounding down, and then same thing. So exhale, folding over. Feel that you can press through that top finger, and then use your lats underneath to peel you back up. Always being mindful of your breath, feeling that your spine is folding, trying to keep that sense of elongation from your fingertips to your top butt cheek. Coming across. Let's do one more here. Hand comes down to the roller. Exhale, fold yourself over. And then releasing, pressing over. From there, leave the roller where it is and bring yourself around so that you can roll down onto the floor, onto your back, and place your feet onto the roller. Now take a second, you can push your feet away a little bit more than usual and take your hands onto your pelvis. So the heels of your hands are on your ASIS bones, the fingers towards your pubic bone. We're just gonna get a little bit, of pel little bit of pelvic mobility here. So posterior tilt your pelvis imprinting your spine and anterior tilt coming up in the other direction. Posterior tilt, draw your belly in, feel that it deepens, spine imprints. And to your tilt, this curvature forms underneath. Here, opening your ribs towards the ceiling. Exhale, drawing in. And then find your neutral pelvis. So that's when you are basically between the posterior and anterior. And your feet are gonna stay on the roller with it a little bit in closer, so not way out here. Legs are a little bit probably less than 90 degrees. Hands come down by your sides. Press your feet into the roller. Use your core, hamstrings, and glutes. Lift up. Come back down. So I'm not doing any spinal articulation here. Just lifting my butt up off the mat. Working hamstring and glute here at the top. And then planting back down. Think about this core connection into your center. Think about your feet pressing into the roller. So I don't want them to be just kind of hanging out there. The arches of my feet are on the roller and I'm really, it's almost like I'm wrapping my feet around them like a bird perching on a wire. It's gonna help you get work all the way up the posterior chain into your hamstrings. Two more here. The last one. And then bring the roller in a little closer so you now you can be on your heels. 
And we're gonna come through spinal articulation this time up into your bridge. So posterior tilt, imprinting your spine, articulating your way up. And then once you've reached the top, find that connection to your breath and articulate your way back down. So see if you can think about doing this while keeping the roller as still as possible. So it's gonna wanna do a little bit of movement maybe. See if you can find that control from your center to counter that. Lots of deep core work required here, concentration, breathing. Feel that your thoracic spine imprints first, ribs come together, and then all the way down to your glutes. Let's do one more here. And then take the roller and bring it so that it's gonna come right underneath your sacrum. Just take a second here and feel this underneath of you. So notice how it changes the positioning of your pelvis. Notice how it feels underneath into your sacrum. Checking in your shoulders, stay relaxed. Now this is a stronger load on your core. So if this is too much, of course, or if you don't have a roller, then of course feel free to do this flat on your back on the mat. On your exhale with your core engaged, lift your legs up to tabletop. Tabletop is your starting or neutral position, and then you're going to do alternating toe hovers. So you bring it down, back to the center, returning back down. So really feel that you are driving this movement from your core. Trying not to simply let your leg drop down and seeing if you can really be mindful and connected to the movement the entire time. Check in with your shoulders. Notice if they want to start to lift off. And really allow your breath here to help you. One more other side. And then from the center, extend your legs out. And if you need to reposition your roller, feel free to do so. Coming through your single leg or your scissors. So leg lower, lift, lower, lift. So come back here to being mindful and connected to what your core is doing. Again, it's a strong load as your leg lowers down. So can you really stay aware of how that is happening in your body and where that is happening from? Find your breath to help you. We'll do two more on either side. Connected with your legs, staying long, really feeling that work the whole way through. Now leave both your legs towards the ceiling, flex and point. So try to imagine that your legs are as long as possible, and then you're trying to get them the slightest little bit longer by driving your heels up or by driving your toes up. Now leave your feet flexed or your toes coming towards you. Dropping down, bicycle, bending up. Driving down, bending up. So my other leg is staying completely stable. Bending through, feel this hamstring work on both sides. Of course, you need lots of work from your breath here. Let's do two more here. And then leave that leg at the top, switching over. Check in with both legs. So the leg that is extended up into the air that is staying there, sometimes wants to get a little bit slack. Try not to let that happen. Try to feel that you are driving down driving your 
your heel through water, pulling through with resistance. And then bringing them both up to the ceiling. Hug your knees in, and you can take the roller out, and just put it to the side, and allow yourself to come down onto your back. Take your hands behind to support your neck. Coming through some upper abdominal work now. So on your exhale, draw your belly in, upper abdominal lift, and then return back down. So similar to what we talked about and how we did it at the beginning when the roller was behind you, feel this sense of lift as your shoulder blades come off the floor, and this work into your center as your belly button deepens, ribs come together, and your ribs draw closer towards your belly button. Exhale as you come up. Always checking in for that neutral spine and pelvis. Pelvic floor lifts, narrowing at your waist. Switching now to your oblique variation. So as you come up, you cross over to one side, back to the center, over to the other side. Really strong sense of connection here as you come across. So there's no shift in your pelvis, but there's this sense of armpit coming towards your thigh. Add your arm now for a challenge if you wish. Crossing over gives you this extra little bit of pull, like someone is pulling your hand across your body. And that gives that little bit of extra work into your obliques from this crossing over action. So your obliques are the abdominals on the side that are responsible for uh, rotation anytime we cross over our body. So it's important to keep them working for day-to-day -day activities that require that. Let's do one more on the other side. Last one here. Yes, excellent job. Hug your knees into your chest. Gently rocking them side to side. Let me get that release. And then bring your legs out, arms up. We're gonna flow through a few sequences of roll up. So I'm just gonna put that up there for now because we're not gonna need it for a bit. Tuck your chin toward your chest, hamstring, hamstrings imprint into the mat, and then peeling up and reaching through. Tuck your tailbone underneath as you come down and articulate. So really trying to again drive this movement from your core. Feel that you deepen spine imprints as you come down. And then when you come in reverse, your thoracic spine leaves first. Staying up on this one, grab one of your weights, bring yourself over to the side. Bottom leg is bent up, top leg is extended out straight, and you're up here on your uh, forearm with your elbow underneath your shoulder. Start with your weight into your hand with your elbow bent, and then bringing it down, opening up. So we're getting shoulder, internal, and external rotation here. And I want you to feel like you're picking yourself up from the bottom. You can even put the roller underneath there if you need to for the feedback. Not for you to lie on it, but so that you can feel it underneath of you and feel that your core is engaging. Three. Two. Last one, now hold it parallel, leg lifts up, arm lifts up off your leg. Extend and flex. So again, keep picking up from the bottom. Leg is now lengthened out long. Find a sense of connection again from your center, always working from the center outward. Three more. Two, last 
one. And then pivot, press and pull. Press and pull. Feel this core connection. Always intentionally pressing up and pulling down. And now we're gonna add some leg movement. So as you come in, you bend up to 90 degrees and then press out straight. So arm and leg bend to 90 and then both come out straight. So it's a little bit of extra work here to into your core because of the you being up on your side and having to really hold yourself up there. Of course, you can also do all of this flat down on your side. Let's do three, two, last one. Now your arm comes straight down, parallel, lift back up. Leg is back to holding out parallel to the floor. Last part of the sequence here, really push through that discomfort, that extra little bit of work. Find your breath to help you. Three more. Two. Last one. Excellent. Okay, bring this weight down. Bring yourself all the way down onto your side. Bottom leg stays bent. Top leg extends out. And then side kick. Coming forward. Pressing back. So again, really finding this connection from your center here. Exhale as your leg comes forward. So you can keep your pelvis stabilized and you can really get that work from your center to help you. Three more. Two. Last one. And then bottom leg straightens out. Top leg comes toe to knee. Again, checking in with your core. You're picking up from the bottom here, even though you're now on your side. You're trying not to just slouch there on your side. Keep your pelvis completely stable. This is external rotation of your leg as it comes up. So no dumping your pelvis backwards. Last three. Two. Last one. Amazing. Okay, very good. Pick up your roller, bring yourself around so that you can be on your stomach. And you need to have enough space to have the roller out in front of you. Start with it um, just underneath your wrists. Lengthen your legs out behind you. Feel that your shoulders are connected underneath. So none of this stuff happening here. Feel that your shoulders are connected. Forehead is down on the mat. And then on your inhale, as your ribs open up, you use your back extension muscles of your thoracic spine to bring you up and then bring you back down. So I'm using the roller kind of as a guide or as, uh, as a tool, I should say, to facilitate this extension. And it really helps open up your chest and your shoulders. I don't want any of this where you're just hoisting yourself up. So feel how you have to work here still into your shoulders, into your thoracic spine, from your core. Belly button picks up off the mat. And again, if you don't have a roller, just put your hands on the floor or your forearms on the floor here and do the same movement. The intention of this is is extension for your thoracic spine. So really allow that to show up. Let's do one more. And then bring yourself all the way up. You can press back into your child's pose for a second using the roller if you wish, just to allow that counter stretch for your spine. And then bring yourself all the way up so that you can come sit on the roller. Make sure your weights are, or grab your weights first because we're gonna use them. 
And so I want you to come and sit on the roller with your legs crossed over in the front. And I want you, the intention of this is for you to be able to open up your hips a little here. So we don't want you jammed way up in here like this. I want you to be right up on your sits bones on the roller. So no kind of slouching here. Up on your sits bones, sit yourself up tall. Make sure your weights are nearby. Find your core connection. And then take your weights out in front. And again, you can do all this without weights. Imagine you're hugging a tree or hugging something round. And then opening out, keep that rounded position back together. So this is a little bit of work for your shoulders and to help you with your posture. I want you to feel as you open up that you connect your shoulders behind you. That also connects to your ribs. Each exhale, your ribs come together, draw your belly in. So there should be nothing happening here up in your traps there where your shoulders elevate. There's no shoulder elevation here. We're just doing this abduction, adduction, where your shoulders work to open and then close. And despite just using one or two kilo weights, they get heavy pretty quickly. Well done everyone, keep going. Find that work from your center. Let's do two more. Last one. Now bring your arms down for a second. The next one we're gonna do is a what I call a lat pull down. So I want you to find your lats, those are the muscles underneath here, working as you pull down. So the work is actually gonna happen on the pull down. So arms come up here, press up, control, use your core, pull down. So the exhale happens when your arms come down. I want you to imagine that you're doing a pull up or you're in the gym using the lat pull down and make it be the work or make it be that's when you work to pull the weights down. Even though gravity could do it, you're not resisting against anything. Really ask for that work. Exhale, core engagement, draw your ribs in, draw your belly in. Working from behind here, finding a strong connection to your center. And if you're not sure what's happening or if it's happening, put one of your weights down, reach your hand around, and feel if your lat is engaging as your arm comes down. You should feel this big muscle turn on right back there, pretty much where your fingers are reaching. Let's do two more. Take some concentration though. Take some brain work to tell it to activate there. Very good, weights come down internal and external rotation at your shoulders. So this is the same as we did a little bit ago lying side on your side, but I want you again here, shoulders internally, externally rotating. So not just your forearm moving in and out, but really feel this sense of work from your shoulders. And again, this is really good for your posture because it allows you to open up across the front, like you're trying to open your collarbone up. Keep connecting to your breath. Always checking in, sitting yourself up tall, drawing your ribs in, drawing your belly button in, lifting your pelvic floor. All these things to sit, think about just as you're sitting. Three, two, last one. Excellent, very good. Okay, you can put the roller to the side now and hold on to one of your weights and bring yourself down onto your other side. So again, lining up uh, elbow underneath, underneath your shoulder, top leg lengthened out, get this connection here from underneath, internal external rotation of your shoulder again. So lift and lower. So this is the exact same movement we were doing a second ago. And now we're just in a different orientation in your body. So notice if it feels the same or different, and notice also if there's any compensations you're making from this other position. For example, are you letting yourself fall backwards? Or are you letting yourself slump downwards? Really find the work, ask for the work, connect to the work, think about the work. Three, two, last 
one, then holding it parallel, arm lifts up, leg lifts up, extend and flex. So that top leg that's lifted now is working to be up in that lifted position. Feel as if you're trying to drive it long at the same time that you're picking up from underneath, connecting from your center, all this work again. Think about so many things to concentrate on. That's why I have to keep reminding you. I know I'm the same. When I take classes, I still need all the reminders. Let's go for three, two, last one from your bend position. Bring it up, press and pull. Can you get just as much work as it pulls down as when you press up? Feel that you're asking for it. Don't let it fall down. Feel that you have to pull it down. Now adding the leg. So add, your leg bends as your arm bends. Press them both out straight. Bend them both in. So this is actually a sneaky little bit of work on your glute knee because your knee will want to turn out towards the ceiling. Try to keep your leg parallel and not allow that little bit of work to happen with your knee or that turn out to happen. Connecting from your center, three more here. Two. Last one. And then bringing your arm straight down, lifting back up. Again, find the control here. So you are in control of the weight lowering and in control of the weight lifting. You are in control of your legs staying up. You are in control of your core here working underneath. Stay involved in the whole thing. Let's go for five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Excellent. Okay, very good. Bring the weight down. Bring your whole body down onto your side. Checking in, elongated out, working here underneath still. Core is turned on. Exhale as you sweep. Inhale, press back. So the intention here is that your pelvis can stay in the same spot. From your core connecting with that pelvic floor lift to help stabilize it. So we need muscles to turn on and work to keep your pelvis in the same spot. Otherwise it's going to want to move and it's gonna to want to fall backwards or it's gonna to want to cave forwards. So really think about, okay, what muscles am I using and engaging during the movement to keep my pelvis stable? Let's do two more here. The last one. And then bottom leg straightens out. Find your balance here on your side. Again, picking up underneath and then toe to knee, external rotation and return. Pelvis is the same. This is your femur rotating in your hip socket as you bring it up. And then you press it out, you're gliding as long as you can be. Get that connection right from your inner thighs all the way through. Let's go for three, two, last one. Excellent. Okay, bring yourself up and come on down into your child's pose. You can just open up into your glutes there. Just let them release and stretch out. Take your stance as wide as you would like. And then coming up, palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Tuck your tailbone underneath, 
pull your belly button up towards your spine, rounding through your flexion, and then inhaling, opening into extension. So allow this mobility to really come through your spine, through your body. Notice how it feels, not with judgment, but just with curiosity and compassion and gratitude that you get to be here moving your body like this. Deepen into the extension, like you're trying to pull your palms towards your knees, opening your ribs to the floor, sits bones to the ceiling. One more set here. And then finding your neutral, bring yourself around one foot towards your inner thigh, so I have my left foot on my right inner thigh. Extend your arms out long, rotate towards your straight leg, flexing forward, and then twisting towards your straight leg, or your bent knee, sorry. Feel that you can press through that top arm and get that beautiful stretch all the way up into here. And then unravel, coming back up. Take your, leave your knee on the floor and then take your straight leg and cross it over, coming through rotation. So twist now towards your shoulder, like you're trying to spiral your body up from your tailbone, out the crown of your head. Each exhale, can you get a little deeper into your spiral? And then unravel. Flipping everything over, so now your other foot, so my right foot comes to my left inner thigh. Sitting tall, arms extend out. Rotate to straight, flexing forward, and then lateral flexion, twist open. You can deepen into it, pressing towards your straight leg. And then unravel, peeling yourself up, back to the center. Bent knee stays on the floor, bring your other leg and cross it over the top. And again, allow yourself to spiral upwards. I picture it like a corkscrew that's twisting into a cork. Exhale, twist a little deeper. And then unravel. Bring yourself back to the center. Take a really nice deep breath in and let it out. Breathe in again, send your arms up overhead. Exhale as you bring them down to land together in front of your heart. Pause there. Give yourself a pat on the back, a high five, a compliment and a kind word for doing the work today. For choosing to move your body and showing up to do Pilates and moving through discomfort and challenge. Well done to you and thank you so much for being here to do it with me. Can't wait to see you again soon.